Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. And before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using. And that is the Chanel Mini Rectangular in the black caviar leather with the light gold hardware. Uh, all right, so if you're on your way to work, if you're about to start your workout, if you're gonna grab your coffee, your tea, come join me and let's get this show on the road, shall we? Uh, with the very first question from Ashley Schneck. I'm pretty sure I butchered your last name, my apologies. Uh, I too am traveling to London soon and recently purchased the Louis Vuitton London guidebook. What are the places that you're most excited to see over there? Uh, oh man, there's so many that we cannot wait to check out. And of course, we're going to be doing the whole touristy thing because we've never been to London. So Buckingham Palace, the Tower of London, Big Ben. Um, what else? We ended up doing a... Um, like an all day an all day tour to go check out Stonehenge, so I am super excited about that. Uh, Bath and Windsor Castle. Uh, what else? Selfridges, Harrods. Uh, I know that we also booked um, an afternoon at the Ritz to have tea, so that is awesome. And one of the things that I am most excited about, and some of you guys will be thinking seriously, that's very morbid, uh, is that we <laughs> were doing a walkthrough uh, for a Jack the Ripper. Now, Jack the Ripper, I was obsessed with the story when I was younger. Um, I mean, I think I watched every movie on it. I, I read every book on it. There, there's just something about it that I was just fascinated with this whole story. I know, it's like I said before, it's super morbid, but uh, we get to do the walkthrough. So I'm, I'm like super jazzed about that. <laughs> Robert's just kind of like, eh, it is what it is. But um, um, those are some of the things that we we hope to do when we are there. Uh, but I wish I wish you the safest of travels uh, when you go over there, and hopefully you have a blast as well. Next question from Austin James: What are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton iPhone folios? Do you think that they are worth the money, or would you rather spend the money on a different SLG? I want a phone case, but the fact that I might get a new phone after spending three hundred and thirty dollars on a phone case bothers me. This is a great question. And, uh, you know, I do appreciate the Louis Vuitton iPhone folios. Um, I love the fact that they come with the credit card slot. So that way, if you wanted to use it as a wallet, you could, or you can go compact without having to carry a handbag. So I do love that aspect of it. Uh, however, for me and my lifestyle, the way that I feel is that whenever you purchase an item such as the iPhone folio, um, the minute that you buy it, it kind of starts a countdown towards its expiration date. Now, I know that some people end up using the same phone or they don't upgrade for two to three years, myself included, but I would much rather put that money towards an SLG that doesn't have an S, uh, that doesn't have an expiration date or that won't end up becoming obsolete. Uh, plus, when you do go to sell them, let's say you use it for two years, three years, uh, by that time they'll you know there might be an iPhone 10, iPhone 11, who knows? <laughs> um, but then the the uh, resale value on that same item won't be the same. You won't be able to get that that same money back. So. To each their own if that's something that you like and you want to enjoy for that amount of time then go for it but for me in my lifestyle i would much rather put that towards something that i can use over and over again without having to think that uh, it won't suit my lifestyle within a year or two so that's just my own two cents uh, but great question all right, uh, Carrie Schofield, I was wondering if you have brothers and sisters. If so, do they share your enthusiasm for luxury brands? What type of gifts do you buy them for Christmas, birthdays, etc.? Um, great question. I do have one brother. He is seven years younger than me, and he definitely shares my love for Lux goodies, <laughs> which is really bad for me. Uh, his birthday was November 4th, and for this past birthday, I bought him a, um, a Louis Vuitton pocket organizer and Dami Graffiti, um, just because he doesn't end up carrying too many uh, credit cards with him or too much cash, so I felt that this would this would be a great item that he can use as a little wallet. Uh, in the past, I've gotten him uh, Hermes ties, um, Mont Blanc cufflinks. Uh, for his 18th birthday, I got him a Movado watch. Um, what else? There's been <laughs> quite a few things and I am definitely screwed this, <laughs> this Christmas because my mom's birthday is on December 6th. Uh, we have Christmas and then my brother graduates from university on the 14th or the 15th of December. So I literally <laughs> have to save as much as I can so that I can, you know, I can uh, splurge on my family members. But um, yes, th those are some of the things that I have bought my brother uh, over the years. So he, I have definitely spoiled him, I think. My mom says so anyways. Uh, she's like, Minnie, <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, what are you going to do? I only have one little brother. Next question. 
question from Christy Mills. I know you have raved about the Louis Vuitton Moyen Monsilly backpack, but would you mind giving me your recommendation on which size you prefer, the MM or the GM? Uh, all right, and I do have pictures on both of these, and I will insert them now. So I have had both of these in my collection and both of them did end up leaving. Uh, but uh, what I liked about the MM, and that's actually the one that we used the most when we were traveling, is the fact that it wasn't too cumbersome. The only downside to it was the fact that it does come with a leather strap, so it's, it tends to kind of dig into your shoulders from time to time. Uh, not only that, I felt that because of its size, it didn't carry as much as I would have liked. Uh, so sometimes I needed to use another handbag to carry other items in there that I would need you know, daily. So the fact that I had carry so much with me. I really didn't like that aspect of it. Uh, but again, the fact that it was, that it's very small and it doesn't get in the way, that's, that's a great aspect of it. Uh, the GM is actually which the one that I prefer out of the two. Uh, the GM, not only does it look better on my body frame because it's not this teeny tiny backpack. Uh, but what I love about it the most is the fact that it comes with the cloth, uh, straps. So they don't end up digging into your shoulders. The fact that you can fit so much into that backpack, my goodness, it is insane. Uh, you know, but they are both great pieces. But if I had to, if I would have kept one out of the two, it would have definitely been the GM just because again, you can fit so much in there and it's really, really comfortable. Uh, but I think they are both super cute bags and I love that silhouette. I love that, that version of backpacks from Louis Vuitton. So the GM for sure. <laughs> All right. Next question from NY loves CC, giving your love for handbags and the amount of research as well as trial and errors you have gone through. Would you ever design your own handbags line? Uh, this is a great question. And I actually get asked this by my friends and my family all the time. Um, I, as much as I would want to, I mean, how awesome would that be? Um, uh, I'd probably have to say no, uh, because of a few different things. Number one, it would be ridiculously expensive uh, for me to start it. But more than anything, because of, you know, the, the thing that I talk about the most on my channel is wear and tear, wear and tear, wear and tear, wear and tear, right? So if I was to make a handbag or if I was to create a handbag, I would put that thing through the ringer. I would put it through through snow, through rain, through massive sunshine, the desert, hurricanes, you name it. Just because I would want to make sure that it can withstand the wear and tear. Uh, and because I'm so anal about certain things, I feel that it would take I would probably be dead by the time that my line actually launched, you know, because I would just want to ensure that it is the best possible thing that I can possibly produce myself. And uh, especially if I'm going to be putting my name on it, you know, so that whole vanity aspect also, you know, weighs in. I think most of us would. We don't want to put a product out there that's just complete shiza. Uh, but I just, I think it would be so incredibly fun to be able to design your own handbags or your line. Uh, I would probably end up calling it Minerva just because, you know, just Minerva, kind of like Cher. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I would. I would, I would, you know, people would say, okay, so like, let's say I, I ended up having a, a handbag, right? And then someone's like, okay, you can put it out in the market. I'd say, no, wait, 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 you have to put it through this test. Well, what about this wear and tear? What about that? I would constantly keep going. So <laughs> it would never end. It would never end. Seriously. <laughs> uh, plus the handbag market, the atmosphere, the, the, I mean, everything about it is such a cutthroat business that you would have to be on top of your A game. So yeah, <laughs> but great question. All right. Next one from Mike O girly 99. I'm pretty sure I butchered your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, I know you said you love the gray monogram eclipse canvas, but Louis Vuitton would never mix that monogram color with their women's products. Bummer. I agree. Uh, have you ever considered buying the men's Braza wallet? I've been considering this wallet because I like the thin profile, but I'm not sure if it will close properly once you fill it up. What do you think? Uh, this is a great question. I really wish I had a picture uh, to share with you guys, but the Louis Vuitton Braza wallet, uh, it's pretty much just an open wallet. It doesn't have any snap button closures. It doesn't come with any, um, zippers. It doesn't have any type of security whatsoever. Uh, truth be told, when I was at the boutique probably two to three weeks ago when I was checking out uh, my brother's uh, wallet, I looked at the Braza wallet and um, I ended up switching over some of my items into that wallet just, you know, just to see how it wears and the functionality of it. And what I didn't like about it is that once you start putting in your credit cards, um, 
it doesn't, it definitely doesn't end up closing properly. And uh, I ended up taking out a few more items out of my wallet that I would normally carry. Uh, so just, you know, just playing devil's advocate here. I feel that you would probably end up having to use another credit card holder just so you feel a little bit more secure about, about the, uh, the wallet itself. Uh, one thing I do absolutely love about this wallet is the fact that it has um, on either side, when you open it up, it has credit card slots. So it does have quite a bit of uh, organization if that's what you needed. But the fact that it just does not stay closed. The fact that it kind of just ends up opening up on its own. It kind of reminds me of the Chanel Yen wallet. Uh, for those of you know uh, that know what I'm talking about, it just kind of just, it stays open. And I feel that if you're going to throw it in your handbag, if you're just going to, um, if you're going to throw it in your handbag, I feel that it might end up opening up if it hits another item. So it, I don't know. It's just, it seems a little too fussy for me, but I love the fact that you can carry so many items in that wallet. So for me personally, I would, uh, I would definitely advise against it. Uh, but it, it's such a shame because it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, so hopefully that was able to help. All right, next question from Jennifer Blue. I am so wanting an Alma BB for Christmas. I can't decide between the black Vernie or the black Epi. I prefer gold tone hardware, but I know that you have gotten rid of your Vernie pieces. Which would you recommend? Uh, great question. And uh, I, you know, even though I did get rid of all of my Vernie pieces, I am a sucker for that leather. For patent leather, I love how shiny it is. I love how vivid, how vibrant the colors look. My goodness, I feel like the handbags are singing. You know, <laughs> when I go into the boutiques, I immediately beeline it for Vernie pieces. Um, but between the two, I would have to say that I would personally go for Epi over Vernie, and the reason I say that is because of the fingerprints that you would see on the black Vernie. Um, when I asked um, some of my uh, subbies and some of my followers on Instagram, I asked you guys about the gray patent leather. A lot of people were saying that they love their patent leather pieces, but uh, the fingerprints that you can't get over the, fin the fingerprints are constantly having to wipe it down. So if that is something that might be a little too fussy for you, then I would definitely advise against the Vernie and go for Epi. Um, but another thing, I, the reason why I would go for, for Epi itself is because it is so, so incredibly carefree. It's like Damia Ben, but it's leather. Um, you do have that texture, so you don't have to worry about scratches. You don't have to worry about, you know, using it in the, in the rain, in the sun, in the snow, whatever it is, it is such a carefree uh, piece. Plus it's very, very understated. So if you didn't want to have the LV monogram Vernie all over the handbag, the fact that you just have the simple, beautiful black epi leather, um, just really speaks volumes about the handbag itself without having to, to, to use the monogram on the bag, if that makes any sense. So between the two, even though I love the Vernie, I love how shiny and how beautiful it is. I feel that the Epi Black is just a little bit more timeless um, and it's just a lot more carefree than any other uh, leather that the Fashion House has. So that would be my that would be my choice. But go with whichever your heart sings. All right, next question from Naturally Posh 31. How do you feel about luxury handbags being sold on Groupon? Right now, Groupon has had several Celine and Prada bags on sale. Do you think that this hurts their resale value? Uh, fantastic question. And do I think it hurts their resale value? No. And the reason I say that is because Celine and Prada are already known for not having the best resale value. So um, I don't think it'll end up hurting the resale value further. Um, you know, case in point, the mini luggage. The mini luggage retails for $3,100 plus tax here on the States. And you can find it on the pre-loved market for $1,500, $1,200. I saw one for $1,100 over the weekend. Of course, it depends on the condition that the bag is in. But still, a lot of these brands uh, are actually, they're known for not holding their value. So I don't think it'll it'll hurt it further, as I said before. Uh, but one thing I do have to say is to be very, very careful of some of these websites that sell some of these items. Uh, because I have seen so many different threads. I have read so many different articles where people end up purchasing from them uh, from certain websites and they actually end up, um, the item ends up being a replica, uh, you know, and they'll say 100% authentic. Uh, but a lot of people, when you look at the reviews, they'll say that uh, the quality isn't the same, the stitching isn't the same, the zippers aren't the same. There's just so many things that they find with the bag that isn't like the original. Um, and I know Groupon offers 100% um, you know, your, your money back or their money back guarantee or whatever it is. Uh, and I've always been so curious to purchase an item just to see if, if it really, if it really is authentic or if not, you know, but 
I <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't want to run the risk of having to go through a big old headache if it ends up being a replica and then having to to do the whole return process, you know, because they say that it's it's uh, hassle free, but still, um, I just don't want to have to deal with it. But um, if any of you guys have purchased from Groupon, I know another one is uh, what is it? Is it Beyond the Rack? Uh, I know um, there's Beyond the Rack and there's one other one. I can't remember to save my life. But if you guys have purchased from them as far as luxury goods go, let us know in the comment section down below if you had a positive experience, if the item ended up being authentic, or if it was a replica, or what your thoughts are on this. I'm really, really curious. Uh, and what else was I going to say about this? Um, you know, just be very, very careful. But if they do make tons of research on it, you can always call the companies and ask them further about the item. And if you can get some of these goods for a less expensive price than what they retail for and you are a fan of the silhouette, then I am all for that. I have always said anytime you can save any type of money on any type of luxury good, I am all for it. Heck yes. Uh, you know, and if you already know that it doesn't hold the best resale value, but you like the bag, then go for it. That's what I did with my mini luggage. I knew right off the bat. I knew that it wasn't going to, uh, there was no way I'd be able to sell it for what I paid for it. And I'm okay with that because I enjoy that handbag. <laughs> you know, sometimes the whole resale um, isn't necessarily what makes or breaks uh, the love of a handbag, if that makes any sense. But regardless, I would really like to hear your guys' uh, comments on... Um, on these uh, bags being sold on Groupon and whatnot. All right, next question from John Curran. I am strongly considering buying a Louis Vuitton passport cover in the Mon Mono Demi Graffite. I am apprehensive about ordering this because I have heard stories of the paint chipping. What are your thoughts on this? Has this happened to your Mon Mono Speedy? Um, I love the Mon Mono Demi Graffite passport holder. And to be honest, if I didn't have uh, the regular monogram, the classic one, I would probably end up getting a Mon Mono uh, passport hol holder. I just love the way that they look. I love Mon Mono in general. I think it is so awesome that you can personalize uh, your Louis Vuitton item. Uh, and here I have my Speedy and my Mon Mono Speedy. And I've had this for a year and a half, maybe something like that. And I haven't had any issues with the paint chipping. And that's something to know, um, as John said, that with any of these Mon Mono pieces, they actually end up putting the paint on top of the canvas. So it is something that they're known for that they end up chipping, but I haven't had any issues with mine whatsoever. Um, nothing at all. And I don't baby this item whatsoever. Uh, so I think that while it might end up happening, um, it might be something that ha that ends up happening over time. Uh, if you are someone that travels quite a bit, uh, obviously the more that you use it, the, the better chances of it chipping uh, quicker will end up happening. But if you travel maybe three, four times a year, um, I think that it'll be fine. You won't have any issues with the paint chipping. Just keep that in the back of your mind that that is something that could end up happening that the paint ends up chipping over time. Uh, if you are someone that absolutely positively doesn't want anything to happen to it, you know, within five months to five years or what have you, then I would advise against it. But personally, uh, I knew the risk of getting a Mon Mono and I knew that that was something that could potentially happen, but it definitely did end up stopping me from getting this speedy uh, just because I love the fact that I was able to add just a little bit more of mini onto a Louis Vuitton uh, item. So I, I say go for it, but whatever your heart says, if it, if it makes your heart sing, then go for it. Uh, and again, if you are someone who travels quite a bit, it will end up, um, you know, showing a lot more wear and tear the more that you use it because you end up traveling so much. So it's all a matter of what it is that makes your heart sing. And I always say that because it's true, <laughs> right? Because I could tell you, you know, don't go for it or go for it. But if it makes your heart beat faster when you see it, then... I think it's a sign that you should go for it. And the last question from Sarah too. What are your thoughts on which luxury handbags are potentially new classics? We all know Hermes, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, and Dior have certain original classic handbags which have been around for ages and will continue to stay in fashion and hold their value. A few bags have enjoyed outstanding popularity in the last couple of years. Example, Celine Luggage, Givenchy Antigona, Fendi Peekaboo, Saint Laurent, Sac de Jour, etc. Do you think any of these bags have the potential to become 
some timeless classics or even just a fairly relevant after a decade, the way that Balenciaga City has, for example. Do you think only bags released by Hermes, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton have the potential to hold their classic status? I know some women think that, so they only buy from those brands. Would love to know your thoughts since we handbag lovers enjoy trying to predict what new bags have the potential to be classics. This is an awesome, awesome question. And I feel that uh, handbags, some of the handbags from Hermes, from Chanel, from Louis Vuitton are classics because they've been around for 20, 30, 40 years, uh, you know, and they have the exact same silhouette. And when you look at these silhouettes, such as the classic flap, when you look at the Birkin or the Kelly, uh, when you look at the Speedy, the Alma, what do they all have in common? They are all very, very simple handbags. They don't have any added bells and whistles. They don't have fringe. They don't have rhinestones. They don't have all of these things on top of them. To me, a classic handbag is something that is very, very simple. Uh, you know, you don't, um, the, the, just the silhouette is something that you can already tell will cater to so many different people. Uh, so I think that when it comes to the Givenchy Antigona, the, uh, the mini luggage, the Fendi Peekaboo, I think that whenever any of these handbags have been into production for the same silhouette for 10 plus years, then it's considered a staple to that fashion house. Now for it to become a classic, I feel only time will tell. And I really think that has to do with how, you know, how many years it, that same silhouette will be in production. Now, out of the ones that you mentioned, I feel that the Celine luggage won't end up um, being one of those classics. I feel that it was very, very popular a few years ago. The popularity has definitely started to die down on this handbag. Uh, plus, a lot of people, including myself, say that the face looks like a robot <laughs> or has a robot face, you know, on the front of the handbag. Uh, so I feel that that won't, that bag won't end up being around for another 10, 15 years. Uh, I'd have to say that the same Laurent uh, Sac de Jour. I think that it's a, it's a maybe. It's a very simple design already. A lot of people like it because it's very understated. So I think only time will tell with that one. Um, but I will definitely have to say that when it comes to the Fendi Peekaboo, even though it doesn't hold the best resale value now, the best thing that this that this uh, fashion house has is that it has the age that you need to make a handbag extremely classic. I feel that because the Peekaboo... Um, even though they have introduced different leathers, different hardwares, and a few other, you know, little added bells and whistles, for the most part, they have some that are very just simple designs. And I feel that the more and more that they produce this bag and the longer it's around, the better their resale value will be in the long run because Fendi has been around since 1925. So they have the age of the fashion house. It is there. And it's just a matter of making one of those types of handbags that just stands the test of time. And I honestly feel that the Fendi Peekaboo will be one of those. Now, when it comes to Givenchy, Givenchy has been around since 1964, and uh, so they already have the age going there, and the Antigona already holds its resale value better than most other luxury brands, of course, not including a Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and Hermes. So the fact that it is a very simple design, it doesn't have too much going on, the fact that it already holds its resale value, I think it's on its way to being a classic. Um, but again, only time will tell with some of these things. Of course, if they have, as I've said before, like crazy prints on them or crazy this, crazy that. They might be limited edition pieces, but that, in my opinion, does not make a classic handbag. The classic handbags are just very, very simple designs um, that, that won't look dated, you know, in 20 years time because a lot of these, while they might be fun, like for example, the uh, uh, Takashi Murakami uh, collaboration with Marc Jacobs for Louis Vuitton, I'm a huge fan of it. I love it. But I know that it won't be super popular 20 years from now because it's a little, some people think that it's a little juvenile. Some people think that it's a little too, uh, too fun and flirty, even though I do like it, but I'd have to know. I know that the monogram, the Damia Ben and the Damia Zor are ones, those types of canvases that will end up being around for, you know, 50 plus years. So Again, only time will tell, but I am just as excited, uh, you know, to know what bags will end up withstanding, um, you know, all this, all this hype and which ones will end up kind of just prevailing over the others. And uh, I'm sure that we will all look back 20 years from now and say, oh man, <laughs> I can't believe, like I'll say, I can't believe that bag. I thought that bag was going to be around for another 40 years. <laughs> I don't know, but it's always, uh, it's always so much fun to, to try to figure out which one's going to, to be around. So 
great, great question. All right, you guys, so that does it for our Minx Monday Q&A. And I also have to say a huge, huge shout out to our wonderful Lux community here. Uh, this is in reference to uh, what we discussed last week as far as team parent, team handbag, um, you know, and the whole sticky situation. I absolutely loved hearing all of your guys' opinions. And uh, what I loved the most was the fact that everyone was respectful of everyone else's opinions. And uh, the funny thing is, is that whenever you look up whenever you look up this thread, whenever you look up um, this situation on any other website, people are at each other's throats. They start name calling. It gets crazy. And there was absolutely nothing of that on my channel. And I thought that was absolutely fantastic, you know, and um, again, another score for our wonderful community here. So I just thought I'd say a huge thank you to that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to answer your guys' questions. And then uh, tomorrow, I will be announcing the giveaway winners. Uh, I have Carpal Tunnel uh, from entering so many names. It was insane. I, I kept on having to take little breaks because I was just like, my hands were, were done from typing them into the into the uh, generator. So uh, the giveaway winners will be up tomorrow. And then Wednesday, I will be doing like a, I don't know, if I'll do 50 facts about me, but maybe 25 facts about me that you guys didn't know. Uh, so if you are interested in that, then tune in and until next time. So as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.